Hello, it is Saturday, October 7th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Saturday crossword, which means today we're going to be solving a themeless, possibly tricky puzzle. And this themeless, possibly tricky edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Noah Bazanson, Alan Blunder, Mitchell Turek, and as always, the indomitable showmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They do keep this channel going and sustain this series. Very grateful to them for that. So thank you to their efforts. And thank you to everybody who's a patron of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which you can yourself investigate and potentially join at patreon.com slash daily solve or through the link in the description field. And there, of course, you can find the bonus videos available to patrons, including my less than brilliantly impressive solve of the, of the uh, latest Boss Words Fall Themeless League puzzle. So enjoy that. If you'd like to see me uh, squirm uh, solving a crossword and uh, of course, the official mug for benefactors. Thank you again to everybody who's a patron. And thanks if you subscribe to this channel on YouTube. That is a big help. It's um, a way to obviously keep up with the channel and help YouTube know that people like it, I suppose. And finally, there is the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join via a description field link as well. It's a nice friendly chat community over there. All right, let's get on to the crossword. This is a construction by Alex Vratzanos, who's constructed, I think, around 20 puzzles for the New York Times. It was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, and it is a Saturday themeless crossword, so let's start solving and see what's in store for us today. Plot development with twists? Question mark. That's interesting. So there's something punny here. I don't know exactly what. Yeah, that's interesting. Plot develop. Maybe plot meaning a sort of garden, something to do with, I don't know, vines or something? I'm, I'm not sure. Enfant terrible. Imps, maybe, so, you know, troublesome children could be. An imp is often used to describe uh, a kind of misbehaving child. Let's look at the downs here and see if this helps. Unofficial 1984 Olympics anthem. Ooh, I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, blank stock, speculative investment. Oh, a meme stock. Wow, this is a sort of a almost a brand new phrase, historically speaking. I mean, just the last few years, I think. This refers to, I think this really hit a high during the pandemic when everybody was sort of stuck inside and people were um, trading stocks online that uh, were kind of became self-fulfilling sort of prophecies in the sense that people would talk them up on places like Reddit and then the stock would go up and then people would buy in even more and then often eventually they would crash. Um, I think that's probably the answer here. Uh, but we'll, we'll check, we'll check, obviously. Equal, one's equal could be one's peer. A liquor brand in a blue bottle, Sky Vodka with two Ys um, as the brand is spelled. This is looking all right so far. Glossed over, sleek, if something is glossy and sleek maybe. Not certain that's correct, but again, we'll just keep we'll keep going around and, and see if we can confirm these things. Warmly welcoming, homey. You could say maybe you describe a restaurant as homey. It's warmly welcoming. It has a cozy atmosphere. Uh, cat breed with American and Celtic lineages. I am not sure offhand. I don't think I'm any kind of expert on cat breeds. Let's look at the crosses. Quite. Something very, so very, it's so, oh, okay, yes. So this crossword is so very difficult, it's quite difficult, um, you could say. So let's see, this looks like I love something. I still am not sure what it is. I, I can't remember where the 1984 Olympics were. Was it, I think it was either San Francisco or Los Angeles. Ooh, I'm not sure though. Could be I love SF or I love LA. If it is one of those, I'm not 100% certain it is one of those cities, but I'm fairly sure it is. No idea about the cat breed. Not plugged in. This could be a, a device, an electric device that is not plugged in, but it could also mean a person who isn't mm, sort of in tune with a particular topic or bit of news. You're not plugged in, but I'm not sure. A1 for one. Oh, a sauce? It could be A1 steak sauce, which is a sort of tangy uh, condiment 
brand. I wonder if that's what that is. Let's see. I mean, that is certainly a brand name of ASOS. Uh, anomalous figure, an outlier. There we go. Oops. Uh, that would make sense. So a figure that doesn't fit the trend or the norm. Short tail, Cadbury short, American short tail, Celtic short tail. I mean, I don't know. It sounds plausible to me. Let's put it in and see if that if that works. My guesses so far have, have panned out. Well, we'll see if that continues. Forget about it. I'm not sure about that. Forget about it. Hmm. Golfer's selection. A wood, maybe? One of the um, golf clubs could be a wood as opposed to an iron, for instance. So not plugged in right, unaware. Okay, so it, it was using it in the figurative sense rather than literally. Forget about it. Still not sure about this one. It could mean literally forget about, it could be someone exhorting you to literally forget about something, but it could be someone saying either, oh, don't worry about it, or um, just sort of reacting with surprise and disbelief or kind of an incredulity. I don't know. Oh, I love LA. I, I mean, I think that's a song. I don't, I can't think what it, I can't sort of bring it to mind in my head at the moment. Forget about it. I don't know. Overwhelmed with the details. Inundated? No, that doesn't fit. In too deep or something? Neither of those fits. Sound off on. Echo something. Sees through adolescence. Rears, maybe? You raise a child, you sort of see them through their adolescence, at which, you know, upon the completion of which they become an adult, and so you no longer need to actively raise them. Radio Hall of Famer Charlemagne the God. I do, I do, oops, I do recognize that at least. Radio Hall of Famer. I wonder what that means. I'm actually not familiar with the Radio Hall of Fame. I'm not actually sure what that's referring to. Okay, overwhelmed with details. In, it's probably in something. Forget about it. This, the beginning of this word is so strange looking. I wonder if I do have something wrong. Golfer's selection. I don't know. Blood of the gods. Icar? Um, that can be used to describe a kind of, uh, I don't know, sometimes I often think of Icar as being used to describe a sort of vile substance, but I wouldn't be surprised if it has a sort of mythological uh, specific relevance here. Refriger Let's check the crosses. Refrigerator compartment. A crisper, um, I think is often where the vegetables are, are put down at the bottom of a refrigerator. Fixture, fixtures at radios. I don't know, it kind of looks like oil rigs to me, just based on the grid, but I don't... I'm not quite sure I understand why. Is that because maybe you'd be in Texas where there are oil... I don't, I, I'm not quite sure. It might be, I'm, I'm probably just on the wrong track there. Overwhelmed with details. Sound off. It does look like echo, doesn't it? So what is this? Forget about it. Maybe this short. Oh, no chance. Oh, right. It isn't short tail. Short hair. That's much better. That sounds more like a cat breed. American short hair or Celtic short hair, maybe. Uh, there we go. So forget about it. No chance. Okay, so it is sort of someone responding with incredulity or disbelief or or denial. Okay, forget it. Oh, <laughs> forget about it and forget about it. Crossing. So gnaw, maybe, or gnaw, something, something like that, or I don't know. Oh, here it is again. This is amazing. We have we have three identical clues. Wow. Okay, well, this forget about it looks like Bad idea, maybe? So forget about it. Nil or nix or... Not sure. That's that's great. I've sometimes wondered how... <laughs> I wonder how... I've, I've thought idly about making a crossword that absolutely maximizes the number of identically repeated clues. I mean, it would be, it would be a real pain to solve, but I, I have, it has occurred to me that that would be sort of an interesting challenge. From conception, 
if something has happened from conception, it's not sure. High sided boat. High sided boat. No, I don't think I know enough about boats to have that immediately. What about these double R's? Fixtures at rodeos. Right, I looked at this already. It's not oil rigs. Um, barrios or something? Pub crawl and then some. I don't know. Let's look elsewhere. Oh, Club Obi-Wan, where Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom opens. I actually didn't remember that was the name of the club, but Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom opens with that sort of James Bond style introduction where Indiana Jones is in a uh, a club in Shanghai, maybe? Um, and anyway, it must have been called Club Obi-Wan, as obviously a reference to the character from Star Wars. Employ the Secret Service, question mark. And Gas Giant. So Gas Giant, my first thought when I see that is I think of a planet like Jupiter as a gas giant. But I suspect this is being a bit of clever misdirection and is referring to a giant oil company. Would that be like ExxonMobil maybe? That is good. I didn't have that in mind when I started speaking, but I killed enough time to give my brain a moment to think. Direction from the Music City to the Motor City. I think the Music City is Nashville and the Motor City is Detroit. So uh, that would be north by northwest, probably, if I think about it geographically. I, I'm usually not great at these sort of geographical clues, but I think that's probably the case. Zero emission aircraft. Um, I don't know, maybe some, some kind of glider or, or an electrically powered aircraft. I'm not, I don't know enough to immediately think of any examples. Let's look at these X's. Detective in high grossing films of 1984, 1987, and 1994. Interesting. Do I think I know who that is? Not sure I, I do off the top of my head. Weapon now known as an LGM-118 Peacekeeper. Uh, I have absolutely no clue about that whatsoever. <laughs> Swing state. So again, the first thing I think of when I see this is I think of a, a U.S. state that could fit this clue, like Iowa. But that is certainly not the case because for for more for a couple of reasons. One, I don't know, it's a Saturday and I just assume that it won't be that straightforward. But also we've got a question mark indicating a kind of pun. So this might refer to swing in the sense of music. Um, a state you would be in? I don't, I'm not sure. John of Disney's Million Dollar Arm. Is this a film? Not sure. Yeah, I have no idea. Boy, this isn't going very well, is it? Punish in a way as a YouTube subscriber. Unsubscribe? Doesn't fit. The end doesn't fit anyway. Um, let's see. Well, don't unsubscribe from me. Don't punish me as a YouTube creator. Let's see. Punish in a way. Something about like. I'm trying to think of functions that would exist on the YouTube website that would be relevant to this. Punish in a way. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, sorry. Zero mission aircraft, puff pieces. This suddenly my my speed has just dropped off here. Weaver's work. Um, I wonder if it's sort of punnily referring to a spider or something. Weaver's work. I'm not sure. Heroin in a legendary franchise. Heroin in a legendary franchise. Plot development with twists. Oh wait. Sorry, I was thinking of gardening before. Could it be a sort of corn maze or a, or a maze maze that's sometimes called, or a hedge maze? There we go, there we go. It is sort of gardening related. Um, the reason I thought that maybe is because heroin in a legendary franchise could be Zelda from The Legend of Zelda. And then when I thought about that, I thought, well, maybe that could work with my earlier thought about plot development, and it did. So that was a fortunate uh, thought. So this is the video game series, The Legend of Zelda. Okay, sitting, set, setting for vitreous humor. 
vitreous humor. That's a that's an anatomical term. Where is the vitreous humor? Is it the ear or the eye? Based on the E here. Detective and high grossing films, weapon. Ugh. John of Disney's million dollar arm. I really don't know. I don't even know if this is a character name or an like a, an actor's name. Swing state. Oh, mood isn't a mood swing. Is that do I think that's right? Swing state is it? Yeah, mood is a state that you're in. That makes sense. Zero mission aircraft. A. I just, I don't know. Punish in a way. Oh, demonetize. That's a thing that can happen to a um, to YouTube videos. They can be demonetized for various things. That's happened to me a couple of times for reasons I rarely understand. Um, because they usually say there's some kind of copyright claim, but I don't know how that could possibly possibly apply to any of my videos. But in any case, um, yeah, that's a way to punish a YouTube creator, pre uh, prevent them from earning any uh, revenue on a particular video. Okay. Oh, this is interesting looking now. Oh, but it's a weapon name. It could be basically anything. Yeah, never mind. Okay, sticks one's neck out, perhaps. And Toy Story 3 villain, for short. Ooh, I, I have seen this, but I don't remember it very well. Toy Story 3 villain, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Employed the Secret Service. Perfect square for the circumference of pi. Perfect square for the circumference of pi. Um, I'm not quite sure I understand what that's... Oh, oh, sorry. Circumference of pi is P-I-E. I mean, it wouldn't have made any sense if circumference of pi spelled P-I, the mathematical constant. That wouldn't really have made more sense either. Pi doesn't have a circumference, circumference but, I was, but I still wasn't thinking about it properly. So perfect square for the circumference of pi. As in a pie that you would bake, or maybe a pizza pie. What on earth is that getting at? That's a very funny clue. High-sided boat, from conception, at or or something. Okay, I need I need to find a, a way back into this puzzle. America's longest-serving first lady, familiarly, Eleanor Roosevelt. Is that familiar? Familiar? Is that not her? Is that not her actual name? I mean, she would certainly be the only possible candidate here because Franklin D. Roosevelt served an unprecedented um, four term, not four full terms, but four terms. Um, well, un both unprecedented and never further achieved um, and now constitutionally impossible to achieve. But it's interesting that that says familiarly. That must not be her sort of full official name. Anyway, employ the Secret Service. Like Duck Soup, it said, among all Marx Brothers films, I don't know, sort of wackiest or zaniest or something. I do know, I mean, I, I've seen some of Duck Soup. I'm not very familiar with the Marx Brothers, but I do know that Duck Soup is sort of considered a real great of theirs. So I wouldn't be surprised if it is the uh, sort of the somethingest considered the, the best or funniest in some way. Uh, zaniest and wacky. Why well, no, I keep saying wackiest. That doesn't actually fit. Zaniest would. Does that help at all here? One who's, who's served admirably. A naval something? Um, I'm not sure. Um, neighborhood near Tarzana. I don't know where Tarzana is, so that doesn't help me. Driven, say. Probably ends with a D. Get wildly enthusiastic. And unrefined. Crass. Get wildly enthusiastic. Not sure. Let's see if crass works. Make a lasting impression. Etch. If you etch something, you'd make an impression that will last. Wedding Bell Blues songwriter Laura. Not sure. Uh, driven, say. Uh, driven, say. Multitude. A multitude of people would be a host. A host of people. 
Wedding Bell Blues. Do I know who this is? I don't know. I probably will when I eventually. Song Songwriter. Figures in an audit in brief. Could be um, GPAs. Does that help? No. That, I don't know what your sort of university grade point average would have to do with an audit. A CPA, a certified public accountant, could, could um, help conduct a tax audit. That would be it. Typed, driven, taped. Neighborhood near, hmm. Maybe I should remove these. Type A, type A personality, a very driven person. Oh, Laura, Laura Nairo, or Nero, Laura Nairo, is it Nero or Nairo? I think it's Laura Nairo. I do, I do know her, at least by name. I'm not sure if I know this song. Maybe I would if I heard it. But I'm certain that's the answer. I mean, I'm not certain, but with Y-R-O, I'd be amazed if that weren't the answer. Okay. Oh, Encino? Is this in the sort of Los Angeles area, neighborhood near Tarzana? I don't think I've ever heard of Tarzana, so. But starting with E-N-C, that could well be it. Let's see here. Like duck soup. Maybe the zaniest. Does that help with anything? What about this? Oh, demonetize with a Z. Sorry about that. Pizza box. That is the perfect square for the circumference of pi. That's very clever. Very good. So then forget about it, Nix. I mean, I thought of that when I first saw this, but it just, I don't really think of people saying Nix as, a, as, a, as an exclamation unto itself. Maybe it is. Maybe that's kind of an old timey thing. I don't know. It's not familiar to me, but it must be the answer. Oh, so a high sided boat must be a dory. I mean, I do know that a dory is a kind of boat, but wouldn't have been able to categorize it with respect to the height of its sides. From conception. Oh, 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 I do recognize this phrase. It's, is it ab, ab ovo? It's sort of from, from the egg. I'm not 100% confident that's correct, but I recognize this as a phrase in general, starting with ab, but, and that would actually make this the Navy thing. Navy something. What about this? Bananas get wildly enthusiastic. Go bananas. There we go. Toy Story 3 villain. Not sure. Well, now I've gotten all the help I'm going to get in this upper col upper corner, so I may as well try and solve it. Sticks one's neck out, perhaps. Uh, ends with an S. Weaver's work. Um, I am just not quite seeing that. House of worship. A mosque. There we go. That fits. And that's proof enough. Oh, I didn't see this clue before. QED. So there's that quad erat demonstrandum. Something like that. You'd, you'd use it to sort of conclude a proof and say, you know, therefore it is proved. Weaver's work. I'm still, yeah, I'm just, just not sure about this one. Oh, a missile weapon now known as an LGM-118 peacekeeper. Some kind of missile. That looks, that looks plausible for the a weapon type. So zero emission aircraft glider. Oh, oh wait, is this North by Northeast? Oh, I'm, I'm very surprised by that. That, that, I guess I was right to say, I'm usually not good at these. I'm usually not good at these, um, geographical clues. I obviously wasn't today. I would not have guessed that Detroit was East. Of Nashville. I, I think it's Detroit and Nashville. Okay, anyway, zero emission aircraft. A gl gliders. It was gliders. Okay, I just threw myself off the scent with a poor entry. Oh, Axel Foley from... That's Beverly Hills Cop, right? Okay, I was completely on the wrong track there because I was thinking a detect a sort of private detective as opposed to a police detective. Um, so I just had that on the wrong track entirely. Also, especially because I feel as though um, private detectives are more common in film series, whereas I don't think of that as being as common in get a lot of TV shows, long running TV shows with police detectives, but less so films. Anyway, there we go. I think that's the answer. Oh, John Hamm was John Hamm and whatever this is, I guess must have been. So the MX missile, I hope that's correct. Presumably bears nothing in common with my mouse, which is an MX vertical mouse. Um, uh, I, I don't think they would be from the same product line. Weaver's work 
Oh, Sigourney Weaver in the film Aliens. Oh, wow. Very, very clever. I, d- I was not even remotely on track with that one. Sticks one's neck out, emerges. Okay, fair enough. You'd sort of emerge and take a risk maybe. Uh, or maybe a turtle literally, its head emerges. Uh, employ the secret service uh, to elope. Oh, right. A secret wedding service. I just not, this, I did not do very well with this, did I? Toy Story 3 villain for short, Lotso? Is that right? That doesn't, that's not familiar to me at all, but I'll just have to assume it's the case. I, I thought I'd recognize this, but I don't. Fixtures, okay, we're back down to here. So if, what have we not seen? Uh, 21945 invasion site informally. Iwo for Iwo Jima. Overwhelmed with details. Does that help with this? In the weeds, yes. You're overwhelmed with details. You're out in the weeds. Sound off on. Echo locate. Right, that's very. That's a very cleverly worded clue. Lots of clever cluing in this puzzle. So to echo, okay, echo locate something is to use a sort of natural internal sort of sonar feedback system to um, bounce sound waves off something. And then based on the uh, time it takes for the sound to return, you, you infer the distance. Okay, a certain offshoot um, often applied to religious offshoots would be a sect. Written in it, this clue is Yoda speak. There we go. We have two, well, sort of two Star Wars references in this clue because this was technically an Indiana Jones reference, but the Indiana Jones reference is itself a Star Wars reference. So essentially two Star Wars references. Ring decisions for short. TKOs, total knockouts. No, technical knockouts. Sorry. I used to get that wrong. Then I learned it more properly and I've just regressed. Arrived at by ballot. Voted to, elected to, there we go. Uh, so by voting ballot. Uh, here we have Pooh Blank Vantage Point. I don't think I know this phrase, actually. It sort of looks French, but I can't think what this would be. Material for Voldemort's wand and Robin Hood's bow. Uh, well, I didn't know either of these facts, but it certainly looks like you would, doesn't it? So it must be the answer. Soldiers hardened by many battles. War horses, you could refer to a person metaphorically as an old war horse. They're a battle-hardened veteran. Davis of Films. Oh, Viola Davis. There we go. Oh, a Navy vet. Oh, right. Okay. So there we go. A bit of, maybe they're a bit of a war horse, a Navy veteran, one who served admirally. They served as an admiral. So they were in the Navy. Pub crawl and then some. Not sure. Develop a bond, say. Attach something would be to develop literally a bond, to bond something to something else. Fixtures at rodeos. Barrels? For the, uh, to leap into as protection, is that what that is? I've been to a rodeo once, um, and I sort of vaguely remember that. I could be misremembering, though. Pub crawl and then some. A bender. Yes, okay, you went on a bender, a sort of drinking spree. There we go. And so this is a football datum abbreviation. This would be interceptions. There we go. Okay, that's the puzzle. Boy, this one really gave me some trouble, didn't it? Mainly up in this corner. That was really what lingered. So Axel Foley, MX Missile, right? I mean, I just wasn't, I wasn't um, immediately latched onto either of those. I mean, MX Missile, I've never even heard of. So that's, that's not surprising. Axel Foley, I just... Did the classic crossword thing where you, without even realizing it, you put yourself on a path that is keeps you um, misguided for ages, as I did here as well with this north northwest entry originally, which then prevented me from getting an extremely straightforward answer, gliders, which even occurred to me early on. So, and then as well, aircraft being both a singular and plural noun that also can sort of throw in a bit of confusion there. And then things I just literally didn't know at all, like Lotso, I don't, doesn't ring a bell to me, even though I'm, I have seen that film. Uh, Million Dollar Arm, I have definitely have not seen that film. Uh, so yeah, so a mix in this puzzle of things, that, just knowledge I straightforwardly didn't know. And then plenty of cases where I think I probably could have done a little better if I just had tweaked my thinking slightly. Anyway, uh, I really do like this forget about it triplet. So we had forget about it, forget about it, and forget about it. There we go. I wonder what the record is for identically clued 
uh, answers in a New York Times crossword is. How, what's, the, what's the highest number of times somebody has achieved this in a single puzzle? I'd be curious to know. Let me know if you happen to. So I'm not sure how one would find that out. But uh, anyway, a fun Saturday puzzle despite my struggles. Let's get on to some clues from yesterday's puzzle, which I did uh, note down. So uh, Evil King explains that senior skip day refers to in high school when all seniors don't show up, even though school is still on for that day. When I was in high school, the district always sort of looked the other way when it came to that. Never explicitly mentioning it was a thing, but also not punishing anyone who participated. It was purposely always on the same day. Freshmen to juniors took their state testing and no teachers had anything planned for the seniors. I suspect that might not be the case for all high schools though. Um, to be honest, I actually just don't remember at all if this was a feature of my school. Like I, It may well have been, I, I just don't remember. So there we go. All right, and the other clue I saw Noted from Brian Parente, a little American radio station call sign trivia. 95% of the time, a radio station in a city west of the Mississippi River will begin with a K, such as the answer today being in Minnesota, whereas a station east of the river will begin with a W, like WCBS, WFAN, etc. There are some exceptions, but I think the clue, including the state of origin, was a hint that the answer was meant to begin with a K. And uh, Stacy Springer points out, that is interesting information. I never noticed the pattern. Of course, this clue is about St. Paul, which is mostly east of the Mississippi, so must be in that 5%. That's a funny um, detail there. And this is interesting. I think I've probably learned this before. I absolutely didn't remember it yesterday. And I went with K, I think because I spent with almost the entirety of my uh, time in the United States on the West Coast. So I think I just had K as the um, prefix to a radio station call name as my baseline assumption. Uh, so I was lucky in that respect. And yeah, it's, um, St. Paul is funny because it's it's really right on the Mississippi River. So it's, it's sort of difficult to even uh, distinguish there, but it is considered to be, I did look it up as well. And as Stacy says, it is considered to be mostly east of the Mississippi. Anyway, there we go. Those were the two clues that I found, uh, the two comments I should say, um, regarding clues from yesterday's puzzle. So thank you to those who left them and to everybody who left clues as always. In any case, that is the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow for the Sunday crossword, a larger uh, themed grid. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Uh -huh.